Well, hi, everybody. With Bradley basketball season just around the corner, we thought we'd look in the rearview mirror just a little bit tonight and take a look at Bradley basketball last season, St. Louis. With one game to go, we're unsure whether Bradley would play who in the first round game. They wound up playing the Salukis of Southern Illinois. They'd beaten them already twice, but now the time for a third. I have my broadcast partner, Chad Klein, with me, the head coach of the Bradley Braves, Brian Wardle, and assistant coach, Drew Adams. Gentlemen, welcome, and what an exciting three days this was in the, what, a 30th year? 20th year of uh, celebration of uh, Arch Madness? Yeah. Good run. Well, thanks, Dave, for the intro. And uh, we have a little fun with this. I see Chad's got a jersey in the background already. He's got some crowd noise. We're ready. <laughs> no, I, I just realized something. I really, truly do have a face for radio. <laughs> <laughs> don't we all, don't we all, Chad? That's for sure. But is look, that a retired number? Uh, no, it is not a retired number. That would be I, my jersey, Dave. I, I just, I just wanted, I, I was going through the, my mind. I know 31 twice, but. Uh, I thought maybe it was something I missed. Well, I know Chad is a lefty, and he loves all the lefties we have on the roster this year. I really do. I even made a comment to you last practice. I'm like, man, the Southpaws are coming out. I like it. Oh, uh, they've been good luck for Bradley, so we got to keep them in the keep them. Now in the they can just they can just match my athleticism, Coach. He'll be good. <laughs> I hope. So. I hope we can match that, Chad. <laughs> We're gonna pick this up with a one point lead, and it was close, really, all the way. Two very good defensive teams. Your team obviously played. Terrific defense, and that's – Southern didn't score a lot, but they very, they defended. So this was really a war. No, it was. It was. It was a close-knit game. Uh, we knew they're – you know, Southern Illinois is a low-possession team. So we knew we were going to have to execute screen well right there. We just ran a little play to kind of get Nate a shot. And uh, a huge offensive rebound, a staple of our program, offensive rebounding, where we swung the ball and got VLA three. So – we knew we tried to get the game up and down more, but we knew Southern Illinois was going to come in and grind us. And at this point, you know, we're up two, a little over four minutes. They call timeout. You know, we're feeling pretty good and, and, and going into the timeout, talking about some different things. Back and forth, I mean, it's a two-point game. He calls timeout. Just obviously you know how, how much momentum shift can happen so quickly in games like these. No, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And Drew, you know, Drew had a lot of the defensive scouts all year for us. So Drew, at the timeout, is big on matchups. And then I'm always asking Drew, you know, what player they're going to go to? What are they going to try to do here? What have they been doing recently in the half? And that's where he, his knowledge and focusing on them offensively comes into play. Yeah, like you can see, I don't think we can rewind, but we were playing Eli was playing as a gapper last possession. We knew they were going to try to attack us downhill. But Eli was able to come pretty far off his man and stop that drive and get his, you know, big body there in the paint. We were talking a lot about Jones going right downhill. He wants to yeah. attack right. We need to keep him out of the paint. I think you'll see here in a little bit we'll even get some bigger defenders on him. Um, but that was – in this play right here, as simple as it is, the play they ran a lot. It was one of the main plays we went over where they just kind of stack the top and he just rejects it and goes downhill with his right hand. and. You know, it's on there because he's good at it, and he was able to get us here this time. And that's one of those guys where your senior might have, you know, not executed the scouting report, but you kind of leave him in because he's probably going to do some good things for you offensively. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I think some good ones are coming. <laughs> so here we come down, free throw. We're going to run a set. We're going to try to, especially in a tight game down the stretch, we're going to try to get the ball in our playmaker's hands. That's Daryl, Elijah. Get Nate maybe some free him up for shots. We get a good switch there, and Daryl attacks downhill. And as you know, in those tournament games, you know, down the stretch, depending with a good crew, they're going to make sure that the game is very even when it comes to the foul calling. So that's always good to attack the paint, attack the basket late in games. It's always interesting, Coach. You talk about, you know, I was talking to Eddie a lot because you guys were doing so much work behind the scenes between games, but how big of a role or how much of a chip on the shoulder did it play for your guys Daryl and Elijah not getting some first team votes. Oh, Tom. Yeah. I mean, we, we recruit kids that 
have chips on their shoulder or, or maybe under recruited or undervalued and, and we take they take a lot of pride in it, like Daryl and Elijah and, and a lot of our guys so uh, it's absolutely important and you know at every free throw you you'll see me turn to like Jimmy Foster on my staff and, and Mike mm -hmm. Drew's got this scout and I'm like hey substitutions do we need to tweak anything what's their line been? and you'll see us always do that at every time out one thing you guys I mean they got a lot, Benson including, they have a lot of shooters in, so we're not right. going to let McMill or Domask or Benson beat us. And so we're pretty much playing Jones one-on-one, -on -one, maybe helping off of one guy is about it right now, but we we should not have let him get downhill with his right hand as much as we kind of have here. And right there is, that's the head coach's bucket, because I told Drew, let's put Jay Sean on him. Jay Sean, bigger, bigger guy right. with Michael Jones. And Jay Sean, <laughs> unfortunately, gave up that right-hand drive. <laughs> no. No, Listen to the scout, coach. Listen to the scout. Come on, man. Great take by Elijah. For sure. Great take. One thing you did at the end of this game that you have to do, and that is make free throws. Yeah, I'm just going to make that comment. And get to the free throw line. We, we love going to the paint and attacking downhill in late games. And Jay Sean did a really good job defending this game, and I think he does a really good job guarding the rest of the way. But that's just a big staple of our defense. We don't want to give up rejects ever to mm -hmm. anybody. And specifically, that was – we put about three things on how to guard somebody, and it was no rejects for Jones. Yeah. So that's where even late in the year, even your experienced guys – and he's only a sophomore in this game, and we're putting Vile in right here offensively, probably down the stretch for his free throw shooting, but defensively – He's a very smart defender, um, but you can make mistakes. I mean, in the moment, Arch Madness, look at that crowd. It's loud. It's, you, you, can, you can break down mentally a little bit. So right here, this is where I asked Drew, Drew, what about zone press, the staff? Yep, let's go. We're going to go 2-2-1 two, two, back into our zone one time after a free throw. So we're changing it up. They've gotten to the rim twice on us in a row. We're struggling in an area, so let's go zone and see if we can get them out of rhythm a little bit, maybe take the ball out of Jones' hands who's a talented driver, and see if we can get a stop here. One thing, people just understand how smart I think Koch was. I mean, that wasn't even his area to go up there. He sees Domas got left open, and he's running out of the block. Something that's not going to show up in the stat. And then right as I talk well about him, he's not going to go up and dunk it. But, but he was just a very, very smart player with good feel on the court. Well, I'm having watched these games already, I, I, how well Koch played throughout this tournament especially defensively with some key defensive plays and some blocks and even offensively made some nice plays too, but really stepped up big time against some of the big guys. And for sure. That's what coach said, you know, Billy's a little, is a bigger, stronger freshman. And he was able to take that bump when he sat on Jones's right hand and not allow him to get downhill. Just don't reach there, Nate. That's a good call. It's a foul. And uh, Nate did a great job moving his feet throughout the tournament one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, just right there, you know, we're fouling a little bit too much right now. So that's what we got to keep them out of the paint. And we got to quit fouling. Make them finish over us without fouling. And right now, Dave Snell is just nice and calm and relaxed, right, Chad? Well, he's, he's like tailgating right now. He's like in a lot of heaven just watching the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Calm as it's I am. The right now. excitement of it is unmatched because Our here you got. Uh, you know, the free throw up and good. It's tie game with 148 to go. And this is where guys step up. And the crowds were great for both teams. Yep. It was electric for Friday night. Boom. Here's big play. Hello and goodbye. And one thing we talked about, you can see how much, you know, they're not helping off of Nate and Billy, and that's creating a lot of space for guys. Yeah. Yep. And that's a great sub by the bench where – you know, Jimmy in this game was helping me with substitutions. Like, hey, let's get Vili in. I checked with, you know, Mike's helping with the offense, and Drew's got the scout, and Drew liked Vili's matchups if he went in the game, but we needed another shooter on the court. We felt to spread them out, and beautiful. We got to the rim easily for a layup because of that. Now you got seven seconds on the top, uh, stop on the shot clock. What are you saying in the huddle to your team on how to defend this? Well, we're probably going to go 55 here. We, you know, we're going to switch everything. But we don't want to get off Benson. Benson's a good player, senior, 40, the big guy. But there's Eli. Look at that. Beautiful wall up. Make him finish over us without fouling. And that's one where I remember Drew said they're going to go to Domas. They're going to do something for Domas. Yeah. And uh, our guys were 
We didn't maybe cover it great, but we were prepared to help and not foul. We're not going to let those guys beat us at the end of the game. No. Brown was bumped by Jones. Yeah, it's a good vertical jump. And it's, to coach's credit, we work on that a lot throughout the year, and I feel like the last couple of years, time we got really into conference, we had, you know, one of the better teams at walling up and protecting the rim. And obviously, Daryl, MVP of this tournament, I mean, he would love to have that play back where he could just spun right off there into a pull-up. And, yeah. you know, we ran an isolation play for Daryl because he just got a layup. So out of the timeout, we're going to go right back to him and try to get him downhill again. Uh, just didn't work out for us. But Jay Sean is very good in Eli, very good at jumping vertical and not fouling. Well, and Jay Sean's going to make up for it here real quick. <laughs> yeah, I was just minute. thinking the same thing. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm psychic, I think, but you know. Got my candy bar ready. Yeah. <laughs> and I know the announcers during this time, they talk about two for one. You know, I'm not a huge <laughs> two for one. This We're not NBA players. We can't call timeouts and get the ball on the sideline. I think the two for one in the NBA makes a lot of sense. But here, we're trying to get Nate for a catch and shoot shot off a pin from Elijah. And if we don't have that, we're going inside to Elijah. Nate just decided, you know what, I'm a senior. This is my last tour. I'm going to go make a play. And we love him for doing that. So here he is. No shot. We want to go inside to Elijah, but he drives. Look at that back cut. See, that's beautiful. beautiful. Oh, Henry. Yeah, I mean, and that really kind of seals it because that puts you up three. I think the night, the cool thing about this whole thing, you always talk about, I listen to you in practice talk about pressure. You never gave up the lead in this game. They tied it. And this is back and forth the whole time, but you never gave up the lead. It is. And, and like little things like that back cut is something we work on all year. We're working on it right now every day, right, Drew? Yep. Every, yes, every day. Your man turns his head. Jay Sean is such a great cutter. Yay, such a great cutter. And, and, and young players learn how to move without the basketball because 90% of the game, 85% of it, you don't have the ball in your hands. Right. The point card. So you got to learn how to move without the ball, and, and that was a great read by Jay Sean. Now, this is a big possession here. Yep. Um, We're going to play Jones one-on-one. -on -one. We're not going to overhelp. We can't give up a three. He does a good job walling up, and that's, again, why we wanted to have a bigger defender like Nate on Jones to make him finish in the paint over some length or, or well, side. Yeah, as, a, as, a, as a defensive coach, you're hoping they swallow the whistle. As an offensive coach, you want him to call the foul. I rewound this three times. I'm like, man, did he foul him? And he didn't foul him. I mean, it was, it was, it was good defense. When you get to Arch Madness, you get a great group. Brown has 17 today. But I love the new rule, the vertical wall up, where if you don't come down, the defense has the right to be between the offense and the, and the basket. I think it was mm -hmm. a great rule change where you don't have to take a charge every time. You can still jump vertical. It shows athleticism. So it's good see how, you see how hyped up the bench is, too, especially those guys that were sitting out. Yep. And me as a head coach right now, I'm still nervous. Just so you know. <laughs> never. <know. laughs> oh. I've been beat at the buzzer, a half court shots a couple times. Like big win. Yeah, big win. You, you joke around. You enjoy this for about sixty seconds, and you figure out: is there any way in heck we can do this again tomorrow? Next. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and, and and Brian Mullins is a is a friend of mine. I think he's a very good coach. Um, you don't ever see me either, like, shake hands and try to give a long speech after a big win. Like, I hate when coaches do that to me. Like, I don't want to talk. When I lose, I want to shake hands, say good game, and move on. Um, you know, he obviously has a lot to be proud of. His team had a good year. and He has some good young players. So, Southern Illinois is going to be tough uh, this season and, and seasons to come. But uh, first game, like I said before, right, Drew? We talk about it all the time. Yes. The hardest game to get is that first one. And if you can get that first one, anything can happen on Saturday. So that's, sure. that's what we wanted. There was no doubt about those free throws at the end going down. No. And at all. No, Daryl was on a mission as a senior. Mm -hmm. Koch and Nate, you know, your seniors got to step up in Arch Madness. I mean, that's what's happened for us back-to-back -back champs. Our seniors have made big plays in both for us to win games. And, and that's what we're going to need if we're, if we're going to three-peat. That's a look at the quarterfinal game.
they already knew who their opponent would be the next day. And it wasn't Northern Iowa. So in our next program, we'll take a look at the Dogs and the Braves game three in game two of Arch Madness.